Hi all, we are back uh, with the Financial Fox Crypto Show and I'm delighted and honoured to have here with me in the studio Lord Russell, member of the British Parliament House of Lords and a commander of the British Empire and also a director of ZU Crypto Networks. Hi Tim, how are Hello. you? Hello, very well. You good? Yes. Okay, so Tim, uh, you are a well-known political figure in the, uh, here in the UK, uh, but also you have over 35 years of experience in corporate finance. Now, uh, what uh, got you interested into ZIO? Well, uh, ZIO is at the forefront of development of blockchain technologies, which are clearly going to be a big part of our future. So, although I'm slightly older than my uh, years would indicate, um, I, I really would like to be part of that as it is the way of the future. And also you are also a non-executive uh, non chairman at St James House, yes. which is a London-listed company that just uh, partner with ZIO on uh, a gaming project. Uh, do you like maybe to explain a little bit more about, uh, um, about that? Yes, how, how that came about really for two, two reasons. F first of all, um, St. James has a subsidiary which has a gambling license to run lotteries in the UK, run a lottery in the UK, which, um, bearing in mind uh, the programme here is to have a joint venture to operate a lottery in Malta, that's advantage number one. Secondly, St. James has for some years had an office in Malta with staff in Malta, so the two go very neatly together. And... Um, I think the conclusion that CU drew, and indeed we drew, that it would be a lot easier to establish a joint venture to get a licence in Malta under our umbrella because we already have one in the UK. If it was a complete start-up with people who had not got a licence anywhere in the world, it would take an awful lot longer to get a licence and up and trading. So would you like maybe to explain about the structure of this joint venture? I mean, what St. James' contribution will be, what ZIU um, work will be? Yes, well, well, well Z, St. James, as I said, has the experience with the uh, lot lottery and the licence in the UK, so will obviously be involved in helping to get the licence and, and to, to provide, in, in a position to provide staff in, in Malta as and when necessary. Um, Zoo, who have the technology and the, the blockchain technology, uh, will enter into a contract with the uh, joint venture to provide that technology and uh, undertake all the operating costs in return for 90% of the, of the revenue. And the balance of the revenue will be split amongst the shareholders, of which St. James will be the largest. In the in the operating company, in, in, in the Malta. Maltese company, yes. So you will be controlling the yes, board, uh, let's yes, say. Yes, uh, in order to have the advantage of our lottery experience, it'll be necessary for us to control the board, uh, so that it, the, the, to, in order to obtain that license, we think a lot quicker than otherwise. Let's talk a little bit about the opportunity in the crypto gaming industry, mm. which is huge. Um, how do you think of blockchain technologies, and in particular what ZIU is developing, can help the gaming industry? Uh, well, there, there are one or two uh, blockchain lotteries just beginning to start, and, but we will be at the forefront of this. And the major advantage of the blockchain technology uh, for a lottery is that it, 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 it masks any possibility, any possibility of theft, fraud, dishonesty. And that's a huge advantage in this industry. So giving more transparency and security Correct. and also making sure the random... The, ran the random nature of the num numbers means that nobody knows except the algorithm buried inside the technology what the winning number is. So, so that, that provides one, transparency and two, security. Okay. Do you think Brexit is going to have a kind of impact on your decision to establish uh, a, com a company in Malta? No, well, of course, uh, as we do this interview, nobody knows when, if and, w and whether Brexit is going to happen. But on the assumption that it does, a lot of technology companies like ours established offices in the European Union. Like St. James. As St. James did, 
um, in, or in order to secure ourselves in the event of a Brexit. And, and a lot of t Malta is an obvious place which is very encouraging of technology companies. And, and once you're located there, you're, you, you're free to trade throughout the European Union, e even, even if Britain has left through Brexit. And also, I think also in terms of regulation, Malta is quite friendly, let's yes. say, much yes. more than other jurisdictions. Yes, Malta is very friendly and is very anxious to encourage, encourage technological companies to get licenses and to develop there. OK, uh, now let's uh, talk maybe a little bit about the recent announcement that uh, uh, ZU had last week, uh, which is about the, uh, the developing of a new project mm. into the healthcare sector, partnering with Kinect Hub. I mean, this is a great news because it's uh, the first move into the healthcare sector, which has got massive potential for the application of blockchain. Uh, and this was just after the appointment of Dr. Zhu, yes. which I understand has got a great experience into uh, healthcare and, and medical innovation. Um, do you want maybe to comment on that? And yes, also, yes. Yeah. I mean, healthcare is not, is not my field, obviously. On the other hand, I, I'm well aware of the opportunities here of the use of blockchain in this sector, particularly in emerging markets. And I'm also, having met Dr. Zhu, realised that she will certainly be a force, force for tremendous good in this area and tremendous advantage, bring tremendous advantage to CU. OK, so you think, the, 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 coming back to the strategy, ZU strategy, so we now made a move into mm. uh, the gaming industry, we may make move into the healthcare sector. Mm. Uh, do you think those will be the two areas where ZU is going to focus to start with? Or no, I think, I think the others. And when you're at the beginning of this exciting development of technology, you want to be in a position to seize as many opportunities as you can to get ahead of, of potential competition. So I'm obviously not going to betray any trade secrets, but I'm sure those will not be the only two areas in which we will develop and use the technology. And I think it's also the point that we discussed with Frank was about making sure that they, Zio could com commercialize on the blockchain and bring a revenue back to yes. the company and value to shareholders. This was all the purpose of Zio, not being just a blockchain protocol, but being a, a technology company that was going to actually have a revenue. As, as we saw many years ago in the dot-com bubble and the dot-com collapse, it's absolutely vital that de developments in new technology can be monetized uh, r rather than simply all, all the inventors thinking, sitting back thinking how clever they are and then they go bust. So it's absolutely vital, vital that, that um, th these developments can be monetized and that's what ZU will do. Okay, so more deals on the table that you are evaluating and... Um, and but it's still a very small team as well. You know, you, you have got um, a great uh, uh, chief technology officer, you've got yourself, mm. uh, uh, there is Frank De Masse, the CEO, but, and Dr. Zhu, but it's still a small team. How uh, do you get on with the other member of the team and how you can coordinate uh, everything to grow the company further? Well, Einstein was a small team and he changed the world, so, so <laughs> I, 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 don't think, uh, I don't think that's necessarily a criticism. I, th I think people will work together and develop and, and de develop structures as the business expands. Who is the genius in the company? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> No, I'm sure everybody is giving a great contribution, yeah. including yourself, with, you know, with this great opportunity uh, with the, the gaming license mm. in Malta. So looking forward to see how the things uh, develop. Mm. Do you think we, we are going to see some update very soon on, uh, on the joint venture? And, um, yes, well, we haven't yet closed the joint venture. We've got, we have a, a memorandum of understanding, a binding memorandum of understanding, and, and it's a question of mechanics getting through the legal mechanics to get that done, which should happen over the next few weeks. And then, then there'll be more announcements after that. OK, last question. ZU is uh, um, a subsidiary of St. George and is going through um, finalising the, yes. the listing on the Canadian Stock Exchange. You are based in London, Malton yes. is Europe. As, uh, as is Dr. Zhu. Yes. So do you see... Um, Lots of traction from UK and uh, also U Europe to you know to what ZU is doing. 
Yes, I, th I think I mean, it's, it's a potentially worldwide business, isn't it? So there, there will certainly be interaction from the UK, interaction from Europe and interaction... From uh, Canada from and... Everywhere, yeah. Okay. Tim, thank you very much for sure. your time. And I hope to have you back soon when we have more uh, uh, news, more things yeah. to discuss. Delighted to come. Thank you very much. This is everything from the Financial Fox. I see you next time.